the last idea that I want to explore with you is how do we determine how many subjects we need in our sample in order to get a good estimator for the population proportions. So this is about determining sample size. Here's some general rules. To determine an adequate sample size, for most studies, if your sample size is greater than or equal to 30, it is going to be adequate. If you have a population that is non-normal, not normally distributed, but it is symmetric. So it's really a matter of having more or less kurtosis in your population. Then a sample as small as 15 will do. If the population is normally distributed and you know that it is, you can use sample sizes as small as 15 and still get good estimators. But if the population is highly skewed, positively or negatively skewed, if it has extreme outliers in it, then you're going to need sample sizes of 50 or more in order to get good estimators. This is the sample size formula. I want to point out two things. The first is this capital E, which is the desired margin of error. This would allow us to set a margin of error that we would then use for making our estimates for the sample size. And the second thing I want to point out is that this formula assumes that we know the population standard deviation or sigma. But as we've already discussed, it's very common that we do not know the population standard deviation or sigma. And in those cases, we can use a planning value. How do we calculate a planning value? We can get the planning value from previous research. Maybe other research has calculated or been aggregated on a large number of studies. We have a pretty good estimate for the population standard deviation. We could also do a pilot study in which we collect a smaller amount of data on a smaller sample and use that for our estimations. Or we could rely on expertise, a, a best guess of the estimate. Let's do it ourselves using this example. A previous study investigating the cost of renting automobiles in the United States found that the mean cost was approximately $55 per day. It has a standard deviation of $9.65. So suppose that we want to estimate a population mean daily rental cost such that there is a 0.95 probability that the sampling error is $2 or less. And the question is, how large a sample size is needed to meet this required precision? Well, to answer that, let's go back to our week 13 Excel spreadsheet. We'll go to the sample size tab. And here we see two boxes. We're gonna use the box on the left, the blue box, which is the adequate sample size for the means. We will enter the values that we got from the word problem in our text. In this case, the mean is 55, which honestly we don't really need for this analysis, but I left a place where we could enter it. We do need the population standard deviation, which has been set at 9.65. Our margin of error is $2, so we'll enter two. And our confidence interval is 0.95, although in other circumstances, we could change that to a 9.0 or a 9.9 or other value. With a confidence interval of 0.95, we have a z-score of 1.96 because, again, we're approximating using a normal distribution, giving us a sample size of 89.4. We'll want to round that up because 0.4 of an individual or an automobile just isn't going to work. We're going to need at least 90 mid-size automobile rentals in order to satisfy the, the project director's $2 margin of error requirement. Now let's apply the same idea using proportions. Here is the sample size formula for proportions. And as with the means, there is an assumption that we know the sample proportion. Well, the problem is we're not gonna have a sample proportion until we have a sample. So we can use a planning value for this as well. How do we get that planning value, which we'll substitute as P asterisk? As before, we can use previous research, the proportion that comes from a similar study. Or we can do a pilot study, and we can get a smaller sample and calculate a proportion for that. We could use our expertise, 
our best guess. Or one final option, we could simply say, I don't know. And we will go with the safest option, which is 50-50, even, 0 0.50 as our estimate for the proportion. Let's do this ourselves. Now we have a question involving a proportion with a margin of error of 0 0.025 at a 95% confidence level. A previous sample of similar units yielded 0.44 for the sample proportion. How large of a sample size is needed to meet this required precision? So returning to our week 13 Excel spreadsheet, we're going to use the box to the right of the green box, and let's enter this information. Our planning value for our proportion is 0.44. The margin of error has been established at 0 0.025. Our confidence level is 0.95, but as before, you can change that to a 0 0.90 or 0.99 or some other value. And this will give us a sample size of 1,514.5, which again, we're going to need to round up. A sample size of 1,515 is needed to reach a desired precision of positive or negative 0 0.025 at 95% confidence. Well, that's all we have for this week. I want to thank you for being here. And before I wrap up, do you guys have any questions before we go? All good? Thank you again for being here. I'll see you next week.